Okay, we're here in the meet, meet and mingle area. This is great to be back into the room. And uh, there we go. I think we've got the audio functioning and we're gathering around, getting our coffee, getting this meeting moving along. I think we've got the pieces together. Let's see if our guest is in the green room. And let me get rid of this and br oh there he is so hi bob how you doing out there well let me just make sure that uh we've got your uh, microphone on and my guess is i don't so hang on for a second and uh let me try that and okay say hello to the group again Good to have you. Yeah, uh, now we got it going. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're joining us here today. Uh, it's Like I say, I had such a great time last time with Dave, and uh, I was thrilled that he invited me back. Well, this is just the preamble, as you know, for our audience, and just to check out all the technology and uh, make sure that it's all working. I know at your end, you're on Skype right now, so you can't see that I've got a three-shot moving with a, a group of people having some coffee. You'll see it in the... Uh, production uh, production piece when we're finished and as we just found we had one audio switch not turned on so I've now found that and I think we're ready to go so if you're ready let me just play the intro and then uh, I'll uh, come back into the room great hang on for a second here we go And here I am. I'm back in my room. Is This is terrific. I think we've actually got things functioning again. And uh, it's been a while since I've had Bob Chesney, uh, our guest uh, today. Uh, he was with us a few weeks back, and he was kind enough to join us again to finish off the conversation that had been rudely interrupted by a little technology difficulty. And as uh, those of you in the audience know, we've been experimenting with different backdrops and trying to find different uh, ways of presenting live video in a comfortable way. Uh, here's the most recent video backdrop of uh, a little uh, den with uh, myself being broadcasted from a television set. I'm not sure if I like that as much as sitting uh, here in the... Uh, uh, general boardroom area but I think that's okay and I think today we want to forget about uh, the, the the nature of the call and just jump right into our guest because time is of limit uh, lim is limited to us and I did want to bring uh, Bob Chesney back Avast on virus and uh, has been we will uh, just move right into Bob there we've got you in there so here we are we're in a two-shot uh, window Bob and once again welcome good to have you in the room thank you Dave thank you and uh, I think we've got uh, video functioning yep I'm moving are you there Here. there you go okay and we just had a blurp on my uh, Skype connection as you know the thing that we've been experimenting with is should we do these guest interviews using Skype because a lot of people really feel comfortable with it or should we use something like Google Video Hangouts, the latest and greatest tool out there? We just finished an interview with uh, a friend of yours, Patricia Fripp, uh, and we uh, used uh, uh, Google Hangout in order to bring her in, and it worked just terrific. No little blurps like I just had a minute ago, and um, it's just one of those things that we're discovering, that different technologies give us different capabilities with live video streaming. We're breaking new ground. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, but uh, heavens, it's it's fun for my and I really like the adventure, and I'm glad you're back because I know you've experimented not only with the uh, videography, uh, formal filming uh, business that you've spent years in, but you've also done live streaming. So for our new guests and those that forgot about who you were. Uh, when you came to us a few weeks ago, could you give us a little recap of your background and 
what uh, has brought you to have an interest in live streaming? Oh, sure. Well, Dave, I was very privileged uh, to produce and host the program Window on Wall Street. It was the longest running program on television. And over the uh, 14 years that we were on major markets like New York, Chicago, San Los Angeles, San Francisco, Denver, and so forth, Atlanta, we featured over 6,000 CEOs. And uh, I built a very, very nice business working with these CEOs uh, doing corporate work and uh, helping to promote their um, not only their image, but their, their corporate message to the shareholders and to the general uh, investing public. Then a funny thing happened. Um, Enron, WorldCom, Lehman Brothers, Ivan Bosky, and a few other people like that came in the picture with insider trading. And to make a long story short, a lot of my clients went to jail. Oh, Not, my goodness. I stayed clear of that. But the point was I just had to find a whole new market because the CEO uh, market was drying up real fast. Wall Street had it picked up a terrible reputation. And I got a chance to meet an amazing man, Jay Abraham. Uh, in fact, I was engaged to uh, produce a little piece for him to promote his, his workshops. And in the same process, I met Chet Holmes, and I got a chance to produce their work. So it became a whole nother dimension. I had gone from the boardroom to, uh, or from uh, Wall Street to Main Street. And this is where I really became passionate of working with business owners and professionals who really build things. And this is not a knock on big corporate uh, entities, but in most cases, they don't build things. I, I, I think they dismantle things. I, I think they, they consolidate. And these entrepreneurs that I'm privileged to work with, uh, they, they make things happen. They bet the payroll every single week. And, and that, uh, that allows me to really work with them to make a difference. Yeah, I so, might just interrupt there because I think some people don't really understand who Jay Abraham or Chet Holmes are. I mean, they're, they're just gurus in the field. Just might want to put a frame of reference around those two people. Well, Jay Abraham is really the father of this whole concept of business growth. Uh, he is very active today. He's the highest. He remains the most high-paid consultant on the planet. And uh, he is magically able to listen to a company CEO, tell their story, what they do, turn it a hundred ways to sideways and find hidden profit centers that no one else could even see. Uh, he's a magician. Uh, just being able to work with him for the last 15 years is it, it just uh, there's just no words to describe it. Chet Holmes, who I uh, also got a chance to meet through Jay, and unfortunately he has passed and may his uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, was a, a true wizard, a, 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 if you will, the salesman's salesman. Uh, he literally built sales staffs all over the world, and uh, he wrote a best-selling book. Uh, but what's interesting is that he lives today earning profits for his family and his company, even though he's passed. Uh, he's used the concept of digital cloning, which we'll talk about. And that's how I sort of picked up on this knocker that or this moniker that I've got of being the digital cloner. And that philosophy is very, very simple. If I can take a business owner or a key individual or a professional and put them in two places at one time, I double their efficiency. It's as simple as that. And if I can do it twice, I can do it four times. And if I can do it four times, I can do it 4,000 times. And if I could do it 4,000 times, I could do it 4 million times. And that's the concept that I bring to my clients, the ability to... I think to I missed that point, though, of what is cloning when you say in two different places at the same time. Well, let's take Chet Holmes. First thing we did is he put on a workshop, and I convinced him that we should record it professionally, insert all of his slides, and even though he was commanding a high price tag that product could be sold and is still sold today and again i re repeat that he he's rest in peace yeah then went and created some xm serious radio commercials which drove people to buy the product and you can turn on xm radio today and still hear his commercials so think about that as far as memorializing someone creating income without uh, ever having to go to work. I mean, that's pretty exciting. I call that digital cloning. Yeah, get with... it. For sure. So uh, there's a couple things going on that uh, uh, you, you asked me to uh, 
put some things on the table that maybe someone can learn from. Uh, we've got three case studies working um, that uh, I'm in collaboration with you on, and uh, I know you won't talk about them. You're too much. <laughs> One of them is I'm very excited to be working with one of the top insurance agents in the nation for a major insurance company. And uh, this, this man is uh, uh, he's just a super, super individual. His greatest skill, he has many skills, but his greatest skill is the ability to recruit agents. Now, in the insurance business, that's what it's all about. If you don't have new agents coming in, uh, because there, there's a turnover, let's face it, uh, in, in sales. So when he engaged me, he said, I want to find a way to, if you will, remotely recruit agents. So we came up with a seven-minute presentation, but unlike any presentation you've ever seen, it's all done by the agents who are successful selling the concept. And he's in it for a short period, but he's not the star. The agents are the star. So this has been very, very successful. Then he called me back and he said, you know, we, we have a great market with um, – ex-military people who are retiring and they really uh, have the attributes of success first of all they understand mission you know in the military you have a yep. mission well in financial services you have a mission to protect someone's retirement to help them sleep at night with their uh, assets to help get their children sc through school with better planning well that's a mission so they've also got discipline they understand what it is to to work hard uh, as opposed to just phoning it in. So we put together a recruiting video for the military, again, using their successful recruits. That's digital cloning. So then we're talking uh, again about how we can retain more agents. So I just happened to be at one of his meetings where the room was absolutely full on a Monday morning. And as I uh, talked to some of the agents, I found that some of them drove a long way to get there. He then proceeded to do a just an outstanding presentation, but it was 90 minutes long. Right. And I got to tell you, it's very difficult to get retention of any kind of knowledge after about 10 minutes. Yeah. But because he's such an open-minded individual and he's so open to uh, to improving, I said, "What if we just condensed everything down into bite-sized parcels, like 10 minutes or less, and you only had one concept at a time?" But then you put action behind it. You put interaction behind it. So in other words, you don't just – it's like a glass of water. You know, you can fill that glass and keep pouring, and all you do is make a mess. But if you have it 10 minutes or less, now you can debrief. So he's now building a complete library of 10-minute or less training modules. Wow. Now what's very exciting is he is now uh, considering replacing the Monday morning meeting where everyone has to drive – with an interactive video uh, communication tool that means no one has to go anywhere, including him. He can literally be on vacation. He can be uh, in the mountains. He can be in his home, in his office, and he can conduct that meeting. And here's the way it would look, uh, Dave. And again, you, you've been so helpful in, in helping me orchestrate this. Number one, he would start the meeting with a one of the 10-minute modules because even though you've heard it before, Sometimes repetition is the mother of, uh, of success. You've got to hear it again and again. Right. Then he would come on and invite two of his top producers, wherever they are, to come in, and he would individually ask them for key, uh, if you will, best practices, things that really worked for them during the week that helped uh, make sales. So, therefore, he's featuring his top agents. And therefore, the program is not just about him, not just about watching a 10-minute video. And then he's got the ability to have all of the agents that he wants to actually come right on their camera from their home or with their iPad or with their uh, – they could be sitting in McDonald's doing – or in Starbucks. And they can participate in the meeting and be called on on video. Now, this previously was impossible to even think about. There's no money in the world that could do this. It would take a CNN or a Fox News to do it. Yes. But now – Possible for literally a car payment. I mean, it's a joke. It, it's and thanks to you, Dave, who's putting the whole thing together. It's going to be tremendous. Uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, he's he's uh, he, he's been a little slow to on the trigger to accept this, but my other clients are jumping on it. It's called FaceTime, and anyone who has an iPad or an iPhone has it already on their unit, but they don't know what it is. Now, some do because they, they may use it for their children, but it's the greatest marketing tool in the, on the planet. 
because now, for example, in his business, the insurance business, you've got an expert uh, in, say, IRA rollovers or 401ks or you know, whatever. And then you've got a new agent who is trying to learn all this stuff. By the time they learn it, they've run out of capital and they're in danger of washing out. For sure. Instead of learning all about what an IRA rollover is and when you use a 401k, all they have to learn are 10 basic concepts of how to bond with a client, how to build a relationship. Then they can pick up their iPhone and say, let me bring in the conversation, so-and-so, so-and-so. He's an expert in this. And then the um, client actually comes right on. He hands them the iPhone or the iPad, and the expert helps put the case together. Everybody wins. The client wins. The agent wins. The product specialist is in the office anyway. They don't have to go anywhere, and you're just having some tremendous efficiency, and most of all, you're retaining key clients. I love uh, the concept, but isn't that dependent on the Apple FaceTime technology? I mean, what happens if people are on Android or other smartphones? Would you direct them over to Google Plus and their video hangouts? Because it'll do the same thing, but wouldn't I'll require having to you know, embed uh, FaceTime on Apple equipment throughout his organization. Well, Dave, that's the reason you and I have such a great working relationship. I'm not smart enough to know this stuff. <laughs> well, I love the brainstorming sessions that you and I have because, you know, that's what comes out of sessions like this where we sit here and we want to share our knowledge to the audience. And, you know, as you talk, I'm saying, well, I love the concept. And we were on one track thinking, oh, well, FaceTime is amazing and everyone's got iPads. But... What happens if you don't, but you do want mobile access or you're with a client who doesn't have uh, Apple technology? Hey, let's jump over to Google Plus uh, Video Hangouts. It's free as well. There's no cost uh, and it's easy to use, but uh, it gets you across platform. And uh, I think that's the excitement that I that I have when I talk to you is I see you out there talking to corporations and entrepreneurs and showing them that there's more to video communications than just a videography, a replay. And, you know, even though I love your term digital cloning, you know, this whole idea of trying to take the latest way of getting a live experience wrapped around what you were telling me earlier, and that is a conversation. And maybe that's, that's a good place to jump over because I certainly get frustrated when I talk to people and they think of using technology like we're using, a, a computer screen and some video with some PowerPoint, and they immediately go into presentation mode. And yet you and I are not in presentation mode, we're in conversation mode. I mean, I can bring up a PowerPoint, you can, you're on Skype right now, so you could turn on the, the, the button on Skype that says bring in uh, your slides from your desktop and add you know, bullet points and graphics and so forth. But because you are that person who's been so long in the video world, where do you see the difference between video presentations and video conversations? Because I think they're very different. Oh, yeah. It, it, they work together. It, it, it's the yin and the yang. Uh, but the bottom line is you've got to look at your – and that's the first question I always ask a client. Who is our target audience? Now, in many cases in the financial services industry, it's a mature individual, probably 40 to 50 plus. So when you start pulling out YouTube videos and flash and dash and uh, things okay. across the screen, you're killing them. Yep. They don't like that stuff. Now, if your audience is 20-somethings and, you know, they can multitask and, and uh, they, they have the attention span of gnats, it's a whole different story. So that's one of the first things I always say. Who is our perfect client? And then we adjust the physical look to that client. And whether we need flash or dash or we need high production values, that's how we decide that. But I, I want to move just to another area that's uh, equally as exciting, and that is I've got a uh, – well, I have a number of them, but this one in particular called me on Friday and said, you know, as you know, Bob, I'm a best-selling author. I'm introducing a brand-new book, and I think I want to do some webinars. And he showed me a little promotional video, and I said, you know – you could do that, but you could do so much more to benefit your end user than just release the book and do a promotional video webinar. He said, tell me more. 
I said, well, first of all, you could turn that into a multi-dimensional learning system the way Patricia Fripp does. She just doesn't sell a book or a DVD or an audio. She sells a multi-dimensional learning system. And now we've been able to serialize that so people can go online and buy a chapter or buy the whole course and have action steps in the process. In other words, not just watching and go, oh, that was cool. No, they can learn from it. Now, Patricia Fripp is an exemplary client because, as you know, she's the foremost uh, uh, professional speaking uh, professional, but, excuse me, professional speaker, and she has every award possible, but she's also the greatest coach for executives on how to be a great professional speaker. But she can tell you how to do something, but unless you can do it, <laughs> all you're doing is, is getting some entertainment. So uh, I, I was speaking to one of her groups one day, and it was so funny because uh, I was coming on right after lunch, and she said, Bob, what is going to be your opening line? And I said, uh, well, I, um, um, the, um, um, she said, well, you do have it memorized. I said, oh, yeah, 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 it, it's going to be this. And she said, hey, that's good. Uh, let's make it better. And she just absolutely upped it like miles. Then she said, what's your second line? I said, you're killing me here, Fripp. She said, Bob, you learned all this stuff. You produced my videos. See, knowing and doing are two different things. I may know how to do something intellectually, but unless I can do it, what good is it? It's entertainment. So that's the reason for what I call action learning. So this uh, client will be now looking at the possibility of creating not only the book, but the electronic version of the book, a video of him presenting it in chapterized modules, an audio for those folks in the car who want to refresh the learning or who are auditory learners. And so what he's done is he's magnified his audience tenfold because he's giving it to them in all the formats. And it's no longer a $25 book. It's now a complete learning system. And therefore, he's able to get high multiples of what would otherwise have been just a book. And that's kind of what you, you teach so much in your, your classes and your, uh, your workshops is that don't think of it as a book anymore. Think of it as a whole platform from which you can expand. Oh, in, indeed. And I think that's part of the, the wonder that comes with the technology is that it's, it's your, your business is not about the technology. It's about building relationships and showing the passion that you have in your topic through the content that you produce. And you now have this, you know, buffet of opportunity uh, of different kinds of technologies you can use. And I get frustrated because people get locked into a framework and not do as we're doing today. Now, even today, you know, the, you'll notice uh, because you can't see the replay go, being uh, or the broadcast rather going out. But uh, Skype has already burped at us twice and froze you up twice. And, you know, and then we've recovered and we're back in and our audio is back in sync with our lips and so forth. And that's because we're at the early stages of all this technology. It's it's new and exciting. It still has you know hiccups that you have to move through and be patient with. But the outcome is so much better. I mean, the, the, the nice thing that y you love to do is meet people face to face. And, you know, if you could just be with every client every moment in their boardroom or having coffee with them at the local uh, Starbucks or Panera's, it would be wonderful. But we can't. Yet using FaceTime, Google video chats, doing wirecasts like we are today, you, you get a chance of interacting with people and feel that you're engaged and feel that you're connecting. And I think that's what Patricia Fripp instilled in me is that she gets on stage as a professional speaker and shows you how that passion of the message comes across in, in everything from her body to her voice to, to the storytelling that she has. And I've always been frustrated the last 10 years of playing with live video because you couldn't get engagement. All you could do was get, you know, a, a, an element of video uh, showing somewhat of the excitement of the person. But today, I mean, you know, 
I, I don't know, I've been doing this forever, and yet I still get a smile on my face when I'm sitting here and we're doing what we're doing, and I'm saying, oh, man, this is so cool. It, I'm just not getting tired of it because I feel I'm connecting to you. you know. And even all the burps you know, make it alive. You know, It's, it's not like a CNN broadcast. Well, for, hey, even if it is CNN, they, their line goes down. They, their Miami connection drops, and they say, well, we'll get back to you. I mean, nothing's flawless. Exactly. But here's the point I want to make, Dave, is that without you observing all those things, the poor person trying to conduct the meeting is left to the elements. And that's the beauty of it. And that's why I insist that my clients work with you to handle the technical aspects so they don't have to do anything but be themselves. They don't have to worry about whether the Skype, Skype hiccuped or not. Uh, I, you know, in my case, I'm not worried in the least because I know I'm in good hands. And a lot of my clients will say, well, you know, I checked out something on the web. Have you heard of what's it's? And I said, you know, it, well, no matter who it is or what it is, if you don't get Dave Williams with it. <laughs> You're very kind. Someone in India for tech support. Come on. You, you want somebody who knows the business is going to take care of those blips and make your life easy. So that's the reason. But I have to just, uh, you know, in case people don't know our story. You and I had worked together electronically for at least five years. Oh, for sure, yeah. And then I happened to be doing an assignment in Toronto. I let you know, and you said, where are you? I'll be there in a half an hour. And, Dave, if we didn't spend four hours together, <laughs> because we were old friends. That's right. That's right. And now it's, uh, you know, whether we're doing it on uh, your system or doing it on Sky, however we're doing it, it's it just continuing the relationship, and, and I'm just so excited. You know, we're running out of time, so I'm going Well, to that's quick. true. You know, we're at the past the 20-minute mark that we wanted to go. And I think the point that you're making is that there's a lot of good business examples where live video streaming can come in. And now that we have what, what essentially is a remote broadcast studio that you can bring multiple people in and have a, a, a remote producer looking after the technology, those clients who have some fear and trepidation about using all this technology can rest a little easier because they can have other people bring in the pieces of the tech. Like I'm operating it today for us and I'm hitting the buttons and making it happen, but we could have a multi-party video and PowerPoint and quiz uh, you know, interaction all going on here without the user or the host having to deal with all the technology. You know, that's like in the old days, I can, I can remember working with Apple back in the early 90s and, you know, having them do a broadcast around the world over satellite and watching them spend close to $320,000 to do it with, uh, you know, satellite feeds, trailers of, of people, audio engineers, video engineers, graphic engineers, all so they could do a presentation. And here you and I are grabbing 20 minutes in our very busy schedule to say hi to each other and talk and broadcast it live to our audience and at the same time record it for everybody else to see it later. And, you know, I mean, the software we're using is under $500, you know, on a standard computer, Not, you know, nothing fanciful. And you're using a headset, I'm using a lavalier mic, and hopefully the audience will think the quality is reasonable in both video and audio and the engagement factor is sufficient that they should look at this kind of technology approach to bring live event and live video streaming into and added on to the things that they do with FaceTime, one-on-one -on -one chatting with Skype, or even if they're using WebEx and GoToMeeting and uh, experimenting with the video there, this kind of environment is a nice add-on and finds a sweet spot as you start to work with clients in the variety of ways that you were mentioning uh, already today. There's just one thing you didn't mention. I'd like to close with that, and that is uh, here in the United States, we now have Obamacare. Yes. I know you don't have that in Canada. You have something. Um, I, I, they tell me it's better, but I, <laughs> the bottom line is any company that's thinking of adding more people to do the kind of work that they can contract out with no Obamacare, no fixed overhead, no benefits to pay for, no employees to motivate, it sure makes their life a lot easier. I don't have any employees you don't have any employees, and I'll tell you, my life is so much happier than when I did. When I started my studio window on Wall Street, I had 18 people.
I was listening to Leo Laporte the other day, and he says, yeah, he's up to 12 employees now. God bless him. God bless all the people who hire people. I'll have none of that. Thank you. Yeah, I'll do, for sure. I'll partner with someone as smart as you every day of the week and twice on Sundays. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of fun. We've got a lot of common ground. And, uh, you know, we should do this on a regular basis, not just, uh, you know, when we've got a content. We should just hang out and uh, share uh, what we're talking about. Maybe invite other people in and bring, uh, you know, three or four of our friends in and then let other people watch. You know, do, do a business hangout, you know, dealing with digital marketing and where uh, recorded video and live video intersect and how you grow your business to get known, to get remembered, to generate those new revenue streams. Uh, you know, it's, it's fun and it's interesting and the technology is inexpensive and easy to use. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, it, getting the, the uh, focus that says this is something we want to add to the way we go out and, and reach out to our client base. Oh, fabulous. Dave, I sure have enjoyed this, and thank you for inviting me back. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time, and uh, I'll uh, just close this out now, and then uh, I'll uh, – don't go away. I'll get back to you after we stop the recording, and uh, we'll do a uh, review of what we did or didn't do right. So hang on for a moment. So anyways, there you go. Uh, there's our uh, interview for today. It went a little longer than we thought. I'm so grateful that uh, Bob had the time to, to finish off uh, the conversation that we started. Uh, I know I'm way behind on the editing of that. There was so much technical difficulty that we had. I've had to pull everything apart, and uh, it is still going to be uh, uh, edited and put up so you can have part one. But my guess is, since tonight didn't uh, uh, blow up on us, the technology seemed to work fairly well, we should be able to have this replay up uh, quite shortly, probably later today. And uh, then we'll post it and let you all know uh, where to go to, to watch that replay. But uh, thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, participating in our community. I really appreciate you as our audience and all the questions that you send to us. And uh, we hope that our monthly uh, virtual handshake, uh, virtual handshake uh, broadcast has some value to you. Make sure that you send us your topics that you'd like us to uh, uh, talk about. But make sure that you've given us a list of uh, very interesting uh, people that you know out there that perhaps you'd like to see an interview with. And I'll do my best, particularly uh, in 2000 and th 2013 production schedule, to add uh, you know, more content that meets your precise needs. So great having you with us. Thanks very much for tuning in, and we'll see you on uh, next month's show.